Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting Lesson. Here we are going to be going over variance analysis for direct materials. So when we're doing a variance analysis, we are trying to find out the amount by which the budgeted amount differs from the actual amount. So here we have a company, Simpson Incorporated, which manufactures a, sp a fruity sports drink, and they are going to be analyzing its performance for the last month in regards to direct materials. So our variance here is going to relate to the direct materials price variance, quantity variance, and then the total variance. So when you're setting up these type of uh, variance problems, it's usually uh, in my opinion, um, you can always use formulas. A lot of time, a lot of textbooks really prefer formulas. Um, but when you're first kind of getting your head around the whole concept, I like to use a chart. So I will be using a chart in this analysis. So uh, our chart actually uh, follows this rule of AAA SSS. So it goes A A A. S A A A S. Let's see. S S. There you go. So you see, we have this A A A S S S, and we set it up this way because what we're doing is we're analyzing the quantities times the prices for each of these. I know this seems a little weird at first, but bear with me. So the ones on the top are going to be quantity, so actual quantity, AQ. The ones on the bottom will be price, so AP. Quantity, price. Quantity, price. All right. So that is probably one of the hardest parts of getting this whole set up is just remembering your rules, AAA, S, 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 and that the quantities go on top and the prices go on the bottom. Now, when we're analyzing direct materials, we always wanna make sure that the quantities that we're using is the unit of measurement that's being used for the material. So for example, notice here, they're talking about bottles and they're also talking about ounces. So when we're talking about direct materials, what we are referring to is the ounces of liquid that are going into making this product. So when we are talking about quantities, we're talking about the unit of measurement that the direct material uses, not what the output is. So in our case, the output, the unit would be bottles. We're not going to use that for a quantity. We're using ounces. We wanna know what the input is, the direct material. So in our case, uh, let's just kind of go down the list and we will kind of fill in our A's and S's. So here it says direct materials used and purchased. They were actually kind of kind here because this could differ and make it a little bit harder, but for introductory purposes, they're the same. So here it says that we used and purchased 7,000 ounces. Now, when we're talking about our S's, our standards, we're referring to budgets. Um, so our A stands for actual, our S's stand for standard, which would be budget. And when we're saying direct materials used and purchased, Think about whether or not they're referring to what you actually used or what you budgeted. Here, it's pretty clear that they're saying what you used. So during that month, they used 7,000 ounces. Okay. And that's also an actual quantity. So we will fill it in there as well. Okay. Next is the actual per ounce price of direct materials. So actual price, there is our actual price price, our AP, and we actually only have one of those, so we just fill it in there. Um, this next one, I'm going to skip these next two for now. This, in my opinion, is the hardest part for new uh, students learning variance analysis, so I'm going to leave that for last, and I'm going to go with this last part here, the budgeted price, the standard price per ounce. There's our SP. So everything thus far should have been kind of self-explanatory. Um, the SQ is the one that while you're studying, I would put a little asterisk next to. Because what the standard qual quantity is actually using is it wants you to use the standard rate. So in our case, um, I should use a different word other than rate since one day you're going to learn about direct, uh, direct labor. 
um, the standard amount of usage that you would expect for actual output. So let me say that again. The standard amount that we would expect to use, in our case, direct materials, for actual output. It's almost, uh, it, it is replicating a flexible budget, if you read about that previously. So we are going to be focusing on what our budgeted, our standard ounces are. And notice how it says standard ounces per bottle produced. This is referring to actual, pro, actual bottles produced. So if we go down to the next line, the actual bottles produced during the month were 900. So basically, our standard quantity should be, okay, we're budgeting that we're going to use 8 ounces per bottle. We actually produced 900 bottles. So that would be 8 ounces for 900 bottles. So simply multiply those two numbers, and you'll see how much we expected to use based on actual output. So if we produce 900 bottles, we budgeted that we would use 8 ounces per bottle, 7,200 ounces is going to be our standard quantity. That, in my opinion, is the hardest part. So remember how I said setting up the table, that's difficult. This, in my opinion, is where I see usually the most errors when it refers to variance analysis. So now that we have our table all set up, we are simply going to multiply vertically. So 7,000 times 10 cents, 7,000 times 9 cents, and 7,200 times 9 cents. So this is going to give us three numbers. Now our variance is going to come from analyzing each number, so or the difference between two numbers. So the difference between these first two, that is going to be our price variance. Now notice when we're taking a look at the inputs that we have up here, it's our prices that are differing. Our quantities stayed the same. It's the prices that are different here. So this is the price variance. And the way that we do the price variance is we take the first one, minus out the second one, enter, and we find that difference. And here we see that it is $70. Um, now, depending on your textbook, they might want you to use positives and negatives here, but I'm going to analyze this from an actual standpoint. If we take a look at these two, we see that our budgeted amount or let's even kind of, yeah, we can look at this. We budgeted that we would spend nine cents per ounce. We actually spent 10 cents per ounce. So if you were a business owner, would you be happy about spending more money than you budgeted? No, that's not really a great thing. You know, if we're thinking realistically, maybe there's a reason why they spent more. But really, um, it's an unfavorable variance there. We spent more money than we budgeted. So this $70 variance, we're going to put a U next to it to indicate that it is unfavorable. Right. Now moving on to the second two, the difference between these two. So 630 minus 648. Now, I'm going to leave it as a negative. Some textbooks like the negative. Um, it indicates that this is a favorable variance. Um, however, take a look at your textbook and make sure that your textbook uses this method. Um, your instructor might want you to uh, report this number as a positive or all variances as positives and just indicate if they're unfavorable or favorable. But let's analyze it a little bit. Um, again, we're finding the quantity variance, and you'll see here that the prices are the same. It is the quantities that differ, so there is our quantity variance. And if we look at this, the standard, our budget, was 7,200. We used 7,000, which means that we used less materials than we budgeted we would. So that's a good thing. That is a favorable variance. Um, your textbook might also indicate that this negative indicates that it's a favorable. I prefer not to use the negatives. I'd rather, um, I'd rather people actually understand why it's a favorable rather than memorizing the positives and negatives, but whatever your textbook says, right? All right, let's keep going. Um, the last one that we want is the total variance. There is actually two ways of taking a look at the total variance. Um, the first way is just to take a look at the two sides. So 700. Here, actually, let's click it. 700 
minus 648. So we see a $52 variance. Um, the amount we budgeted, the S's are on this side, the actuals are on this side. The amount we budgeted was 648. We spent 700, so we spent more than what we budgeted. That would be unfavorable. $52 unfavorable for that one. Um, the other way that you could take a look at the total variance is by analyzing these two numbers. This actually might be a good option for you to kind of check your work. Um, if you have an unfavorable and a favorable, we're essentially just netting the two. So unfavorable, favorable, obviously they offset each other. So 70 minus 18 equals 52. The unfavorable was the bigger number, so it's unfavorable. If these were both unfavorable, then we would add them and it would be unfavorable. If they were both favorable, we would add them and they'd be favorable. So really two different ways of finding that quantity variance, or sorry, that total variance, I apologize. All right, and that's it for variance analysis. Um, obviously you can use this method also for your direct labor. You can use it also for uh, variable overhead. Um, the one thing that you definitely are probably going to want to keep a close eye on when it comes to a direct materials variance analysis is the direct materials used and purchased. If these numbers differ, your AQs are uh, going to be a little different here, but that's more advanced cost accounting. So thank you so much for learning with me. Um, until next time, uh, happy studying.